Scoop believed that an intelligent foreign policy required a knowledge of history. And it required an expertise that, that was, came out of the study of the civilization, the culture, and of course the language of a people. And that was one of the things that drew him to uh, what is now the Jackson School because I think he saw, he wanted his legacy really associated with that kind of view of what he called good judgment in international, in, in foreign policy. Good, ju good judgment arose from study of history, uh, wisdom about what made a particular people tick, what was their character, what was their history, what were their values. And uh, he felt it was absolutely essential for an intelligent foreign policy to have that kind of expertise brought to bear on, on the making of policy. And so when he held hearings, he brought in these experts. Uh, and uh, as, as for China, uh, he saw in it a great civilization. He saw in, in, in Deng Xiaoping an opening, uh, an opening up, uh, which was really dramatic at that point. I mean, we're, the Cultural Revolution was just ending. Uh, when we went over and Deng Xiaoping had just been rehabilitated and become the leader and decided to open the country and, and bring in foreign investment and uh, democracy wall had just gone up. So we have some pictures, I think, of Scoop in front of democracy wall and people putting up signs for democracy. So it was a very exciting uh, time for a country that had been through uh, incredible uh, turmoil the, of the uh, Cultural Revolution. Uh, Mao Zedong was responsible for the death of millions and millions of people. I mean, this was a terrible, terrible period in Chinese history. And we were coming to it uh, on the third, this third trip when the country was just opening up. So it was very exciting. One of my, one of my real wonderful memories of him was uh, just a few weeks before he died, <clears throat> we, uh, were, we got on a microbus and went out to uh, Beijing University, Beida. And he gave a talk to students there about uh, Cold War and so on. And then we got back on the microbus and and I was sitting next to him and I said, uh, I said, uh, Scoop, how do you think this is going to end? How is the Cold War going to end? This is 1983. And, you know, it was a long ride back to the hotel, but it was a fascinating discussion. He talked about uh, the vulnerabilities of the Soviet system, the weaknesses, the economy, and most of all about the way, it, the, way the Soviet system treated its people. Uh, and the conclusion was that we had to stay the course. We had to stay the course for as long as, as long as it took to, to deal with this uh, threat to international peace.